Yeah, I know it's been a while since I've done an Oklahoma basketball video. My apologies, but I do stay pretty busy. I work two jobs, and yes, not to be confused with Peter Griffin, but I am a family guy. Wife, kid, yes, even dogs. I do stay busy, no question about it. But I do still have time to watch Oklahoma basketball. If not on television, I definitely watch them on tape delay. So I do keep up with their games, okay? Even though I may not do a video right after. It's definitely harder to make videos for basketball season to find time to do it rather than football. And if it's been two or three days after the game, I'm not going to do a video because by then the video would have lost its luster, okay? Would have lost its freshness. So that explains why you didn't see an Oklahoma Texas video after Oklahoma lost to the Horns. But to be fair, on my defense, I, did, I also did not do an Oklahoma Baylor video in early March after the Sooners beat Baylor for the second time. So there have been times where I have not done Oklahoma videos after Sooner victories, okay? Just to be fair. So let's go ahead and talk about the Sooners for a little bit. Um, we'll talk about the Big 12 tournament and the NCAAs. But first, you can look at the Sooner season from um, two sides, okay? And this is why I bylined my video. I can't figure this Oklahoma basketball team out. On one hand, it's been a terrific season, okay? Um, even though a lot of people may not feel like it's been. 24-6, and six, number six in the country right now. Shouldn't apologize for that, okay? And uh, we'll be a high seed in whichever region they're placed in uh, come Sunday during um, Selection Sunday for the March Madness Tournament, which, of course, will begin um, in a little bit more than a week. Buddy Heald. National Player of the Year, according to Sporting News. Congratulations to him. And also for the second straight year, Big 12 Player of the Year. And, of course, his awards, I have a feeling, are not done yet. And, of course, Sooners have beaten some good competition this year, especially early on Wisconsin and, of course, the route over Villanova, a top-five team. And they've swept West Virginia and they swept Baylor, a couple of teams that will be in the NCAA tournament as well. But on the other hand, the Sooners in the month of February – uh, really took a big nosedive. I mean, it was just the opposite of John Denver. It was a Rocky Mountain low. Sooners lost most of their games in that month as their three-point and field goal percentage went way down. They couldn't get much production from inside. The bench was hasn't been really a strength for the Sooners this season when they needed the bench to step up. It did not, and they went through some stretches and games in which they got very little production once teams got a big run. In the case of the Texas game, they couldn't get anything going with about eight minutes to go, in which Texas had a 22 to nothing run to see a seven point lead. And then you're down by double digits. Nobody stepped up. And we've seen the turnover bug come back for Oklahoma, as we've seen recently. So for the Sooners, got to take care of the basketball. Can't stress that enough, especially once you get into the postseason and you're going to be facing teams that probably um, are going to be guard orientated. They have blueprints to what Baylor did when Baylor was down 24 and got back into that game by forcing turnovers. Of course, West Virginia, even though I know OUBM twice this year, uh, of course, West Virginia uh, presents problems because of how they press. They're going to see uh, you know, video of, of those games, too, because, again, teams have a hard time you know, trying to figure West Virginia out with the press. You can ask Baylor about that in their most recent game versus WVU. But the bottom line is that you know, as good of a year as Buddy Hill has had this season, um, we've seen him struggle when he's trying to break double teams. He doesn't dribble the same, and definitely he sometimes is premature with his passes, and that leads to problems. Okay, So it's not just enough that the Sooners during um, the second half of the season, which hasn't been as good as the first, haven't shot the ball as well, but sometimes they just simply put are not well spaced, and they get careless with the ball. And if they're not shooting well from the outside, when you need production, when you need that second uh, choice, which is inside play, it, for the most part, has not come through this season. So that's left the Sooners vulnerable. That's why I prefaced this video. I can't figure this Oklahoma basketball team out because I don't really know what you're going to be expecting come March Madness, unless you go against a team that plays zone, and maybe the Sooners will get good looks from the outside, which we know is their strength. Well, looking at the Big 12 tournament this week, of course, we know that the Sooners are a number three seed. They finished a game behind West Virginia, so the Mountaineers are number two. Both teams will play Thursday night. West Virginia plays Texas Tech, a number seven seed. Both teams figured to be in the Big 12, um, figured to be in the NCAA tournament, I should say. 
Um, seven teams bigger to be in the NCAA tournament coming out of the Big 12, which has been the most competitive league in college basketball this year. The nightcap on Thursday will be number three Oklahoma against Iowa State, the number six seed. And Iowa State still ranks in the top 25, even though the Cyclones, a surprise to many, including yours truly, have lost 10 games this season. That's more losses than I thought that they would have. But they're still a top 25 team, and they still have the talent. They still have t the, the talent to um, be one of those sleepers come March Madness. And because this tournament's in Kansas City, and because the proximity between Ames, Iowa, and Kansas City isn't that far, you can rest assured that Iowa State will have a lot more fan support in the Big 12 tournament than Oklahoma. So it's going to seem like a road game for the Sooners. So that's another obstacle that Oklahoma has to overcome. And I'm telling you, unless West Virginia loses to Texas Tech, if Oklahoma loses to Iowa State, the Sooners could actually drop to a number three seed in the NCAA tournament come next week. And by the way, last year, the Sooners were a number three seed in the tournament and got sent to Columbus, Ohio. Remember, Baylor was a number three seed last year as well, and they got shipped to Jacksonville and lost in the first round. Now, am I saying that the Sooners are going to lose if they are a number three seed and don't get to play in Oklahoma City? I'm not saying that, but you make it tougher because you're not going to be playing close to home. And as you know, uh, one of the eight sub-regionals this year is in Oklahoma City, March 18th and 20th, and the Sooners have a chance to play only a half an hour from the University of Oklahoma to play at OKC, to play at Bricktown at Chesapeake. An amazing opportunity if you can play the first round and the second round close to home and get that fan support, get that proximity, and you can get springboarded into the Sweet 16. But if you're a number three seed, you're leaving it up to the committee to decide if you're going to play close to home or you're going to play somewhere else. Okay? If you can be a number two seed, then you're assured that you're going to be playing in the OKC metro area. But if you lose to Iowa State, then being a number two seed at that point, your chances really got slimmer. If the Sooners get hot this week, meaning they can beat Iowa State, they can beat West Virginia, assuming the Mountaineers beat Texas Tech, and if you upset Kansas, assuming that KU is in the Big 12 Championship, and right now that looks like a pretty good bet, then you could elevate yourself to a number one seed. So for the Sooners, um, there's still time to get things corrected. Um, and the main thing is, have that team chemistry that you had earlier in the season. they got to cut down on the turnovers. It cannot all be Buddy Heald doing the offensive production for the Sooners. And if we see that Sooner team that we saw back in December for a good part in January, Oklahoma can, in fact, make noise come March Madness. Otherwise, if, this, if that team that we saw during the second half of the season, then no pun intended, but the Sooner season will end sooner than later. And their long February, which resulted in most of their losses, could in fact translate to a short March. So we'll see how the Sooners do. Personally, right now, I don't know. I, I just don't know. That. I know that's not going on on a limb, but I, I, I just don't know. <sighs> 24-6 has been a heck of a year, but um, I just I just don't know about this Sooner team. I can't figure them out. Thursday might be a good indicator in the Big 12 tournament against Iowa State, and that should be um, a, a decent way to uh, get prepared for the madness that we call March Madness, which, of course, starts next week. Good luck, Oklahoma. Hopefully, Big 12 tournament, they can have a good showing. Thanks, everybody.